Hey Maplers, today we're going to talk about ignore enemy defense and how you can use it for max damage. This video is going to feature formulas, numbers, data, and overall will be a departure from my normal videos, but in a good way I think. All the numbers I have are either from MapleWiki or from StrategyWiki, and I'll link those along with timestamps in the description. Let's get to it. So ignore defense allows your character to ignore a percentage of the leftover monster's defense. Monster's defense is expressed as a percentage and will reduce your final damage dealt by the leftover monster's defense. For this to make sense, we also have to define that each enemy in the game has some percentage of physical damage reduction and magical damage reduction. This is PDR and MDR for short. There are some that have different amounts of each, but most enemies have the same percentage. For example, the Chaos version of Horntail has 50% MDR and PDR. We'll go a little more into detail on how this calculates out, but this is the absolute very basic explanation of what Ignore Defense is. You can only get up to 100%, so yes, this does mean at some point you're going to have inevitable damage reduction on bosses especially. This is why other stats such as boss damage, critical damage, attack percentage, and etc. will all come in. This video is focusing on just Ignore Defense though, so for the sake of keeping this video under 25 minutes, I'm going to assume those stats don't exist. So to help with the understanding of the MDR and PDR and how this works in practice, I went ahead and actually just recorded myself trying Magnus on hard mode, who has 120% PDR and MDR. This way, there's a reduction in my damage because the total uh, PDR and MDR is over 100. So let's take a look. The first video here has me at 91.15% ignore defense. As you can see, the damage here is pretty stable at 300 to 350 million per hit. The second video has me at about 96.74%, so 5.5% or so higher. As we look at this video of me trying hard Magnus, my damage is now sitting at a solid 400 million with the same everything else, same link skills, same legion skills, same everything. Why is that? Well, there is yet another boring formula to this, and that is the damage reduction that is by the ignore defense. So to get the damage reduction total, you'll subtract your ignore defense from 100, change that to a decimal, and multiply it by the PDR slash MDR of the boss to get the damage reduction. So in this case, my damage reduction was 10%, versus 3.912%. So in this case, my damage was higher by 6%. This of course doesn't sound like a super stark difference since the PDR is at 120%. So what if we used a different example like say Helix where the PDR is 250%? Well, the difference has actually become insane real fast. So our numbers become 22% and 8%. So now you're seeing a 14% difference in damage reduction based on a 6% change in ignore defense. This is why it's so crucial for endgame. So now that we know how to calculate our damage reduction based on the ignore defense, we also want to be able to calculate how much ignore defense we actually have. Have you ever noticed that when you add 15% ignore defense to your stats, it doesn't actually add 15%? Well, that's actually on purpose. So, when calculating new sources of Ignore Defense, MapleStory uses a multiplicative formula that gives you diminishing returns, so to speak, to make sure that you don't raise it too fast and gain the ability to kill bosses that are too high for you too fast. The formula looks like this. And this is absolutely disgusting. I completely understand if you want to turn off your monitor and leave this video right now. It is gross to look at. But here's the skinny assuming you have 50% ignore defense and add 15% ignore defense. The only problem with this calculation, this assumes that you are adding together one source. So you have 50% and you add one item of 15% that gets you to 57.5%, not 65%. What happens if you add a couple of different things together? Like for example, you have three lines of ignore defense from familiars like I do. Well, that is a different story. Our trusty source says that ignore defense on the same equipment appearing multiple times or skills with hyper passives 
to ignore defense and fifth job enhancement passives are treated as separate sources. Remember that rather than added into one source. However, for hyper passives enhancing debuffs that reduce monster defense, it is added together before multiplying. For example, if you debuff minus 30% monster defense combined with a hyper passive that increases the defense reduced by 20%, the result is 30 plus 20% or 50%. But if you're adding two separate sources together, they will actually multiply and you'll have to use another formula to get the single source that you actually add together. So what does this mean? This means you have to run multiple sources through that calculation. And here is the calculation form in my example. So when I have three lines of 15% ignore defense totaling 45%, the single source number after running it through the formula earlier is actually 38.59% rounded. So if we go ahead and put this into the formula to add this number, so we add our 91.15% ignore defense that I have currently, we add the 38.59% that I'm adding, it should get us to about 94.5 or so. And when I use my familiars, that is exactly what the number comes to on my stat window. So you're all saying explosive jello, this is annoying, I just wanna know where to get it. Fair enough. Ignore enemy defense is so non-negotiable that you absolutely must have it and you really should aim for as much as possible. My personal opinion is that you want to have at least 93% or higher to be effective against end game bosses as the damage reduction below that is just too unbearable to overcome even with insane boss damage numbers. Again, that's my opinion. The exact percentage will vary if you play a class that maybe has a skill that ignores all defense like true snipe for crossbow masters does in fifth job. There are tons of link skills and other items that give ignore defense and my personal favorites are the luminous link skills and the hoyong link skills since you only have to get to 120 at least for uh, hoyong you can go luminous to 210 and then also the legion board it's called in this picture they refer to the legion as union also there's some items listed in this picture things like the berserker ring i don't have it but this is located in the tower of oz if you wanted to grind for it also, keep in mind that some of these items are no longer available or are from past events. And then I also want to mention in this section that there are certain classes that have a bit of affinity for ignore defense, as most of them have a skill that usually ignores 100% of defense. So I'll list them off in a picture and also kind of read them off. So the Kaiser, Demon Avenger, Zero, Wild Hunter, Blaster, Luminous, Mihil, Cannon Master, Buccaneer, Dual Blade, Shadower, X Bow Master or Crossbow Master, Paladin, and Pathfinder with the fully charged Nova Blast all have a skill that ignores 100% of enemy defense when you use it. So you're probably asking yourself, what's better? Ignore defense, critical damage, boss damage, or attack percentage for bosses? Well, theoretically, you want all of it as much as possible. There's a hundred variables to consider for each of these to tell you exactly which one is the best and they all have unbelievably in-depth calculations for all of them. So it'd be impossible for me to tell you exactly for sure which one is best for you. Generally speaking though, you would want lines of ignore defense up to, again my opinion, of 93%, then percentage attack lines, lines of crit damage percent or critical damage percent, then lines of boss damage percent and lines of just regular damage percent. If you'd like an easy way to see what you should increase to most efficiently increase your damage, take a look at these pictures. So how to read these would be to use the X axis to find where you are with the listed stat. So that's the horizontal line. Then correspond that with the Y axis of the other stat, that's the vertical line. If you find that your point is in the lower section, then you'll wanna focus more on the upper color stat as that will increase your damage faster. This is vice versa if you find yourself in the higher damage or in the higher stat. If you find yourself right on the line curve, then you are properly optimized for damage and you can increase both as much as you want. The formulas and pictures for these are both on strategy wiki if you're interested. Whew, holy crap, I need a beer to relax after stretching my gray matter in ways I shouldn't have. I actually learned something in the last few days doing research for this video and man, I hope I've given you hope for defeating bosses solo or with a party easier. 
Good luck out there, Maplers, and peace.